Hey everybody, it's EJ from iDesign.com. We've got a really fun one today. You are going to learn how to animate a walk cycle on a simple cartoon character. Okay, it's walking time. So let's uh, get a different view here. Let's go two up side by side and let's get a, uh, let's go to our left. Now let's go to our right view here. So we have a side view so we can actually do this animation or uh, animated walk cycle here. So the main things we're going to be animating are these legs first off. You need to move your legs to walk, right? So what we're going to do is the thing about walk cycles is it's basically following uh, an ingredient list or a set of instructions uh, because basically what walk cycles are are animating between poses. And if I bring up my fi uh, my finished uh, walk cycle here, you can see that I have, if I bring up my timeline here, this is basically, uh, basically a loop over 28 seconds or 27 seconds. Uh, and what happens is there's basically four keyframes and then a loop back to its original uh, position. So there's four key poses in this simplified walk cycle. In more complex walk cycles, there could be eight key poses, but for a more cartoonish character, we're gonna start slow, and we're gonna just start with four simple poses. So, uh, I'm just gonna spell out all the poses for you that we're gonna animate between, and the first is with our right leg kicked out and fully extended, and our left leg fully planted. So that's one key pose. And then there's another key pose where both of our feet are kind of touching the ground. So the tip of the toe on the right or on the left foot and then the back of the heel on the right foot. And then we have another pose where now it's flipped where our left leg's forward and fully extended and our right leg is planted. So it's the exact reverse of this first pose. And just like the reverse of these poses, we also have a reverse of the contact pose. And that is where our uh, left heel is, plant, uh, is touching the floor and our right toe is touching the floor. So that is our fourth pose. And then we, we all go back to the beginning and that creates the loop. And we have a nice little uh, walk pose. And the one thing I wanna point out is between these poses, you can see the uh, our lemon character, the body of our lemon dipping as the both of these legs are outstretched because that's a natural position where your arms are uh, you know contacting both points, your body is going to be close to the floor because your legs are kind of bent, right? So then we have this nice little bobbing motion as well. And that's where I like to kind of plan out and build the structure of my walk cycle is through that bobbing motion first and foremost. So let's go back to our, our standing still lemon. And what we're gonna do is just create that little bobbing motion. So all we're gonna do is create a keyframe on frame one. And then every frame, every uh, pose is gonna be about seven frames to the next pose. So I'm gonna go seven frames and just move a dip the lemon guy down a little bit. And then we're just basically gonna have him uh, loop this out every seven, every seven frames. So 21 and then uh, frame 28. So now we just have him like, oh, he's excited. He's excited to go for a walk. Yes, he is. Uh, so, so now we have that little bobbing motion. We can always go back in here and say, oh, we need him to bob a little bit more lower to the floor, which we can totally do. Uh, so we have that. So now what we can do is we have the bobbing motion. Now we can actually start keyframing our, uh, our legs poses, our leg poses. So remember our first pose and just like, uh, you know, it's just good advice. You want to put the right, you want to put the right foot first, right foot forward. Uh, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put the right foot forward. And again, our first pose is going to be where our right leg is fully extended forward and our left leg is planted. And we're at the height of our little bobby bob and dip of our cycle. 
So what I'm going to do is then just set keyframes for these uh, goals. And basically what we're going to do is we're just going to be animating and moving in the Z. You can see the Z uh, coordinates over there moving and the Y. We're not going to mess with the Z or anything. So I'm just going to move this and I'm going to have this, this uh, red axis uh, little marker selected to constrain it. And I'm just going to set some keyframes there for the Y and the Z. And the same thing for the left leg in the Y and the Z. I'm just going to set some keyframes. So now I can untwirl these. And we can see what's going on. Like that. There we go. So now that's our first pose. And now we have the squatting happen. The squatting happening. And uh, what's going to happen is we're now going to animate towards that contact pose where the back heel is going to be touching the ground and the uh, toe of the left foot is going to be touching the ground as well. So we're just going to put that in position. It's very important to also keep in mind the ground plane here. So we don't want like the toe. Right now it's going through this ground plane, the zero uh, uh, in Y right here. So we just want the heel to touch the uh, floor and we'll set some keyframes in the X and Y for the right leg and then for the left leg we're gonna do the same thing and make sure that toe is touching and have it all the way back like this and uh, make sure the toe is not going through the floor that's bad and then we'll set some keyframes for the left leg and then we'll go to frame 14 and this is another pose where the body is up in the air. That bob is at the, the peak of its height. And this is another planted foot frame or planted foot pose. So just like we had the left leg planted for that, we're going to have the right leg planted for this pose. And again, we're going to make sure that foot is right on the floor and set a keyframe. And this is the pose where the left leg then goes from this back pose and then gets kicked out to right about there. So basically the reverse of our first pose, right? And we'll set a keyframe. So now we have this little action going on. And looking pretty good so far. And now we're again at that contact pose, but again the reverse of this. So let's just keyframe that at frame 21. So we went ahead seven more frames. So uh, let's go and bring this leg down. And that heel is going to touch the floor. Right like that. And then this, uh, this other leg is going to, this toe is going to touch the floor there as well. And we'll set some keyframes for that. And keyframes for the left leg. And then basically that last frame is just a loop. So I can just go ahead and grab these keyframes, pull them back. And uh, so that's the start and the end. And let's press play and see what we have. So you can see that this is uh, looking pretty good. It's kind of like high stepping. <laughs> so it's all dependent on how high you want your legs to be kicked uh, in your walk cycle and all that good stuff. But this is looking pretty dang good. And we can also, you know, if we wanted to go into our uh, go into our curves here and start messing around and some easy eases and stuff like that. Uh, but, you know, I don't want to be tweaking curves all day. So this is looking really good. Uh, the one thing I want to do next is add uh, some arm movement. So we don't want his arms just staying stationary or anything like that. So what we're going to do is the way you uh, work with arm animation with uh, a walk cycle is that you have uh, opposing movements or opposing motion with your legs. And since our left leg is forward, we actually need our left arm back. There we go. That's looking good. And now, I can set some keyframes for that. And now we have the opposing motion, opposing movement there. And now we can go to frame 14 and then just switch the arms. So this arm will be back like this. Make sure that looks good. Looking good. Hit a keyframe. And then grab this arm, move it forward. Again, opposing the, uh, the movement here. 
and set some keyframes. And there we go. And actually, that's all we need. What we need to do is uh, we're just going to use these three key or these two keyframes, and basically, we're just going to take the keyframes from the beginning and copy them, and make them to the end. And now, if we hit play, we now have this guy doing his little walk, checking out, uh, waving his arms, and we got the opposing motion going on. Uh, one thing we can do with stuff like arms and legs or uh, arms and heads and bodies is start adding some like uh, secondary motion or some offset animation. So what we can do is maybe like offset the animation of the arms. So maybe the, uh, the legs start and then the arms move. Or we have the arms lead, so we have a frame ahead where the arm kind of leads forward. So the thing we need to do uh, with that, if you actually did more than one frame, is uh, duplicate these keyframes even more. So now we have more real estate to kind of slide all these keyframes back and forth because we have like this undulation, uh, undulating motion. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So now we have more frames to kind of slide back and forth. And we can actually, now we have this all open, we can add a little bit more uh, ease on all these keyframes. So now we have just a little bit of offset movement. So we have like the, the arms moving just one frame forward. Uh, so it looks like the arms are kind of leading. Or we can do totally back, uh, totally the other way and slide all these forward and have this keyframe just be a frame behind. So something like that. Uh, to add even better, so like even more noticeable uh, movement is we want this head bob. We want the, uh, the actual head to bob on our character so we can have this bob uh, back and forward. And the funny part is, is like depending on where your character's body is pointing towards, so he's pointed forward right now. And if we hit play, you can see he's like, if he had an angry face on, like this would be perfect. Like this kind of stance where he's like, I'm determined to kick someone's butt. I'm gonna squash some lemons. So you get these lemon jokes. Uh, he's gonna squeeze some lemons. He's on a mission. Or, you know, maybe he just, uh, you know, just won something. I don't know what that would be. He, he is not going to be used in some lemonade or anything. So if you have his stance a little bit backwards, he looks more proud and happy. Maybe he just had some baby lemons. I don't know. Uh, he bought a new lemon tree. I'll stop. I'll stop. Okay, so let's have some, like, bobbing motion, right? So uh, what we want to do is when his leg is forward, and even if you notice when you walk, when your leg is forward, your body is going to move backwards. And I just did it myself in my chair. Uh, but that's going to be like the back pose. So what we're going to do is just move and tilt this body backwards. And it's very important where you put your anchor point on your body. So I specifically put it right there where your torso would be or where your hip would be. So I'm going to set a keyframe for that rotation. And then when you're going forward, uh, you would go kind of like this, going forward in this stance because you're planting forward. And we'll just plant a little bit. And then basically it's just, you know, looping these keyframes. So we'll do just that. Something like that. Yep. So now we just have this looped. You can see we can add a little bit more ease and let's see what we have. So I think this is a little bit too much of a nod. Uh, so we can actually bring that back a little bit. I think he's not uh, nodding too forward a little bit too much. So we'll just move this back a little bit. So uh, that's looking pretty good. I think what I want to do smooth out these curves a little bit more or maybe maybe we'll just decrease the curves here as you can see in here and we can do the same thing with this where we kind of offset this uh, motion a little bit so again what I'm going to do is just duplicate all these keyframes so we have a little bit more real estate and maybe move this forward so our head is kind of leaning forward first so you can see that the head is leading forward before this leg kind of plants. So you can have it like that, or we can have this be a little bit late 
and have our head bob backwards so our bodies so our legs are kind of leading at that point so we have a little bit of like uh, animation offset so whatever you want to do I actually like that that looks kind of like a nice little nod nice little nod and uh, we can adjust the keyframes here or the curves uh, and again we can maybe if that's a little bit too extreme of a nod we can uh, not have it nod forward so much so we can go like that and then it's just like more of a subtle thing so it's all tweaking how much movement you want and if we really wanted to we can maybe adjust and animate that leaf on top of his head we can do that but uh, this is looking pretty nice I'm pretty happy with how this turned out so what did we do today we created some uh, uh, a rigged little simple cartoon character using Spline IK and that was a lot of fun and then we took all those Spline IK pieces like the arms and the legs and uh, made this guy walk by again animating between these key poses so again uh, animating walk cycles is just a lot like following ingredients. This is all based off of real life uh, movements and real life walk cycles that make even the most cartoony walk look believable by keyframing to each of these poses that happen in real life. And again, you can always tweak walk cycles to have a little bit more attitude, have him like stomping his foot a lot harder to the ground, and that's all done with keyframes and keying, uh, adding more poses to the animation. All right, so we learned how to use Spline IK to add IK to a simple cartoon character, and then how to animate a simple walk cycle on that character as well. Our little lemon guy is walking tall. And uh, if you have any questions on any of the things I covered in this tutorial, be sure to ask me in the comments section. If you create any little animations, any walk cycles on any characters you create, I wanna see them. Be sure to hit me up on Twitter or Facebook or iDesign.com. I'd love to see what you guys come up with. And uh, if you like this tutorial, be sure to hit the like button. I would appreciate that. And as always, I appreciate you watching all this stuff. So I'll see you guys in the next one, all right? Bye, everybody.